Leaving academia is not something that's at the forefront of everyone's mind when they enter a PhD or when they're sort of trying out the early stages of research, but my argument is that you should absolutely be thinking about an exit strategy from academia. Now, I kind of think of it like a rock star, like everyone wants to be a rock star, they play the guitar, but the chances of getting there are very, very slim. So it's kind of like academia. Yes, you can aim to be the rock star of the academic world and become a professor, but in reality, the numbers are against you, the chances are against you. And if you prepare for a fallback, a career that you still really love, a career that you'll absolutely enjoy, but you have to plan early in your kind of exit strategy. In fact, one of the best times to start thinking about what else you would like to do instead of an academic career is at the beginning of your PhD. Um, when you sort of like start understanding the chances, the academic lifestyle that you may not even like towards the end, having that fallback just gives you something to uh, feel comfortable about. And also leaving academia is quite a taboo topic, at least when I was leaving, you know, I actually lied to my uh, colleagues and I was like, yes, I've got a plan. I know exactly what I'm doing. When I had no idea what I was doing, I was terrified. And people would say to me all the time, I don't know how you're doing it. I don't know what else I would do. And I think that is a terrible position to be in. To feel like you are trapped in any job is terrible, but let alone an academic career where you've worked your way up the, you know, to a PhD, you've put a lot of effort in, and then to feel trapped and not have options no wonder people are so sad when it comes to leaving academia. It should be something that uh, you are looking forward to. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the steps for leaving academia, whether or not you're a PhD student or you're an early career researcher or later, and what I did and the tips and tricks that I picked up along the way. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. I'll put a link in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails, everything from the tools I use, how to write the perfect abstract, my TEDx talk, and more. Go sign up, it's exclusive content only available on that newsletter. I'll see you over there. The moment you start a PhD or an early career research uh, position, you should start thinking about what exactly you want to do and start building up the skills alongside your PhD or alongside your research position. Now that's easier said than done and I know I'm asking a lot of very busy people already, but in my experience, you know, I started volunteering my time to do the things I thought that I would like to do as a career. And for me at the time, that was science communication. I was like, I love it. I think this is what I want to do as a career. And I looked for opportunities to build those skills. I did courses. Um, I also, uh, what did I do? I reached out to like the Australian, the Research Institute, hang on, R.I. Oz it was at the time. So the Royal Institute of Australia, they were like the science communication channel. They were in Adelaide where I was based, which was very fortunate. And I asked if they, I could blog for them for free. And that's what I did for ages. I blogged and I then ended up producing videos for them. Um, and then I did free writing for Australian Quarterly, just trying to build up that kind of um, skill base and also get feedback from editors. And you know, for you, you have to kind of work out, well, what do you want to do? And look, no one knows exactly what they want to do at any one time. You can only go on your gut instinct, what you enjoy, what you feel like you will enjoy. I'm doing something completely different now, but you know, some overlapping skills. But one thing I would recommend you do is when you've got the security of a, of a PhD position for three years, or you have like an early career research position, is you start trialing different skills that you like uh, to build. So you may be like, oh, I feel like doing a writing thing. Go find an online course and build those skills. Um, oh, I, I may enjoy um, public speaking. Go find public speaking. Oh, I may enjoy coding. Go find an online coding course that you can learn anything these days. And it's just about, about exploring a load of different options and sort of like honing in on the ones that you love and you and like. If you like data, that's brilliant. You can do loads of online data analysis, big data. You can do a load of tech skills online. You can do writing, you can do arts. You know, the world is your 
oyster. You can do anything alongside your PhD or your early career research um, uh, position. And, you know, the great thing is, is it's so different to those things that they actually ended up refreshing me because I was like, oh, I'm not doing my research, which is quite a nice, it's like a nice little break. It's something a bit different. So yes, the first thing is to go out, explore those skills, and don't try to think of it as like, I'm building skills to get a job later. You're, you're literally just trying to find things you enjoy at this point. Try loads of things and uh, you'll slowly hone in on the things you're like, oh, okay, yeah, this is what I actually really enjoy. After that exploratory phase where you're going out and you're trying to find different skills, you know, you're still doing your research, but now's the time to start making connections. Now, in Australia, in particular, Adelaide, it's very insular, and it's not what you know, it's who you know. So I was very forthcoming with people, and I was like reaching out, and I was like, hey, I enjoy doing this. Here's, you know, a little bit of what I've done in the past. Um, is there any opportunity to meet up with you, connect? I had loads of coffees. People love going for a coffee, mainly because it gets them out of the office. They feel like they're doing something productive. People like sharing their skills and experience as well. And I would reach out to loads of people, meetup.com, Facebook groups, um, Eventbrite, all of these are places where people come together for particular research fields or particular job types or particular skills. And I found that reaching out to people through these meetup groups or Eventbrite groups, you know, turning up, networking, it's a little bit uncomfortable at first, but because you're the inquisitive party, you can go and you can ask questions. People love it. You know, they like to see the enthusiasm. And in my case, it was science communication. So I joined the Science Communicators of Australia um, and I attended their conferences and I met up as much as I could with people, um, I attended RIOs things, you know, it was about being seen in the right places and networking is a huge component these days of finding a job and a career that you like. Um, and also you're gonna have people that uh, can sort of back you up if you need references for a certain thing because remember we're changing our career from outside of academia, which is really tough. So you need to kind of uh, find people that can, you know, now point you in the right direction to something completely different, new, exciting, and you know, I left academia, being relatively scared, and now I am so happy with what I'm doing with my career. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, it's about building those networks. So go out, find those things, join in, start building relationships. The third thing that is very important when you're trying to leave academia after your PhD or, you know, as part of your leaving as an early career researcher or later is building evidence. And this is the third step. So you've done the exploratory thing. Maybe you've spent a six months to a year doing that thing. Then you've gone out and you start building connections related to that skill that you, you want to build and maybe build a career around. Um, and the next step really is to build evidence. So this is the step before the big jump, before the big leap and um, you really just have to build up evidence. Now for me it was blogging. I did an online blog which no longer no longer exists but I was blogging every week about science. I was trying to communicate science in a funny comedic way that was light-hearted, a little bit rude, well, a lot rude um, and that actually opened up for me writing for Science Alert because they were like what on earth is this guy doing? These uh, science articles are like nothing else out there. They are so offensive, uh, rude, but they talk about science. And I actually ended up having, you know, a meeting with their HR manager and then writing for them for a bit. So Science Alert had at the time an audience of like 10 million people on Facebook, which was just so great for me to do that. I then got accepted into Cosmos Magazine as an intern. Um, and I was like, okay, yes, science career is working. That's because I laid the first two foundations and I then uh, had evidence that I could show that I was actually doing the thing. Um, I was creating uh, content around science and I was like, no, give that, you know, here's my evidence, give me a chance to do that for you. Um, and that's the third step. So those are the three building stages. Build the um, skills that you want alongside your PhD, build the networks and build evidence. Those three things really allow you to feel comfortable, as comfortable as possible, when the jump happens. Now let's talk about that. The jump out of academia is scary. And there's three things that I really feel like need to be in place before it can feel as comfortable as it can feel. It's never gonna feel great because everyone in your life is gonna be like, you've got a PhD, you're in a university, why do you wanna leave? It seems like you're living the dream um, and you're not. 
And that's absolutely fine. A lot of people leave academia, you know, the alternative career after a PhD is in fact going into academia. So many people leave and people just don't understand that. So the three things about getting ready to jump. The first one is financial. Make sure that you have a large runway. So build up a little bit of, um, uh, like a, a runway where you can maybe not earn any money for six months to a year. Like if if as long as possible, get support from friends and family if, if that's open to you. Um, just build up savings during your PhD so that when you get ready to make this big jump, you're not under financial stress. Financial stress causes a lot of people to make quick decisions that are based on money and not on the career or life that they genuinely want to lead. I'm all about life by design, not by default. And that just means you can then design your life rather than going into the one that just earns the most money because you've run out of money. So that's the first thing. Make sure your finances are completely set. I had a very supportive partner who, you know, after earning money and, and putting a load aside, I was like, I may not earn money for like two years. And she was like, it's fine, let's let's do this. We worked it out and we could do it. I'm very fortunate. And, uh, you know, you may not be in that position, but having as long a runway as possible will take off that financial stress. Okay, the second thing you need to do is lie to your colleagues. Um, it's one thing that I found really important, which was just being like, yeah, I know exactly what I'm doing. Don't worry, I've got a plan, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. And you kind of like, in your mind, you create this little linear story when in fact you are pooping yourself. You're like, what on earth am I doing? Why the hell am I leaving this job? Oh my God, I'm entering the unknown. I'm, you know, I became a freelance science writer for a little bit and uh, people were saying to me, yeah, like oh, I wouldn't know what to do. And I was like, don't worry, I've got this all planned out. I've been doing this for years. When in fact, deep in Inside, I was just as scared as they would be. But, uh, you know, just building up that little narrative around your colleagues and yourself just helps you feel more confident. Trust me, uh, it certainly helped me a lot when I had to kind of like convince myself this was the right thing to be doing. Um, and the last thing is to get support from anyone that needs to support you for your runway time um, and just buy in to uh, get them to buy into your, your decisions because. Having an external factor, an external person say to you, well, maybe this isn't such a great idea, it runs the tapes in your mind, which is like, oh, maybe it's not a good idea. Maybe I should not do this. Okay, I should just stay. Maybe I should apply for the grant. You know, like, no, it's time. And making the jump is scary for everyone. But I think having all of these things in place that I've just talked about will help you leave academia in a much better position than if you get forced out of the end because you know, you've know you run out of grant funding or there's no more money to keep you on a certain project or whatever it is, not having any sort of control in your career is terrifying. And by doing the things in this video, you have taken back control when the inevitable happens for most people, which is they can no longer continue in a career in academia. Scary, but uh, yes, a, a reality that I think a lot of people have to face up to much earlier than they really do. So there we have it. There are the steps for leaving academia. If you've gone through a PhD or if you're just doing masters, it's very important to do those three building stages. Build the skills alongside your job. Just use your heart and follow what you really like to do. You know, that's really what you're doing. You're designing a career that you'll actually get fulfillment from. Second thing is, is once you find that thing after maybe six months to a year of exploring is build uh, relationships and networks in that thing. And the third thing is build evidence so that you can say to someone when you leave, hey, this is what I've done. These are the things I've created. This is my uh, CV, if you want, of my new skills that is completely separate to my academic stuff, um, but give me a chance. And uh, you know, with my enthusiasm for this area, you can see that I've done all this stuff and um, just, yeah, employ me, give me a trial, all of that stuff. So that is essentially the three building steps and then getting ready to jump is just about jumping. It's never a good time. Now, one thing someone once said to me is, you know, starting a business or changing careers is like, you know, driving, they used, you know, I'll say driving from Adelaide to Melbourne, which is about eight hours and expecting green lights all of the way. That's gonna be very, very unlikely and it's not really gonna happen. So you just have to wait for a few green lights and that's it. And then you just start down this uh, path and it won't take you linear. No career now is linear, um, but you can just feel confident with the first steps. So uh, yes, it is scary and that is how I did it. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that. Have you left 
left academia, what did you make sure you had in place before you did? That's something that's really interesting to me. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Look after yourself.